uh, that I think it's very uh, disappointing that both uh, senior government ministers, when talking about the housing plans in this budget, uh, were saying how they feel uh, that the government's housing plan is working. Uh, and I think they're showing that they're actually really uh, hugely out of touch with the reality of people's uh, lives with respect uh, to housing. They seem to be oblivious to the huge pain that there is in this country uh, from the inadequacy of uh, access to housing. Uh, this budget fails uh, to tackle uh, rents, fails to tackle the scourge of vacancy that we have across the country, fails to tackle the uh, damage that investment funds uh, are doing to housing in Ireland, charging uh, unaffordable rents and driving down home ownership at the same time. The tax credit for renters without properly enforced rent control and without a rent freeze uh, will simply be gobbled up uh, by landlords through rent increases. The tax on vacant homes is so low and ineffective at just 0.3%. Uh, it doesn't come anywhere near uh, pro property price inflation, which is running at 8%, not even remotely uh, close to it, and unfortunately would be very ineffective. And this uh, budget fails to do anything about investment funds paying virtually uh, no tax uh, at all. Given the huge increase in rents in the last decade, they have almost doubled. Uh, you would have thought that the tax credit would go some way uh, towards uh, addressing this, but it will only make the smallest of dents in terms of the very high rents that renters are paying. The failure to extend rent pressure zones nationwide, the failure to enforce rent pressure zones, and the failure to introduce a freeze on rent increases means that this credit will further fuel uh, rental inflation. This will be a uh, subvention to landlords through the back door and will help uh, fuel uh, further rent uh, increases. New rent increases uh, in the last year have increased by 9%, way above uh, the cap uh, allowed for under the rent pressure zone uh, legislation. Those rent, new rental uh, prices refers mainly to existing rental stock where there are newly registered uh, tenancies. The rent pressure zone legislation simply isn't working, it's not been enforced properly. The vast majority of investigations carried out by the Sanctions and Investigations Unit of the Residential Tenancies Board relate to breaches of rent pressure zone legislation. And in fact, out of 38 sanctions issued in a 12-month period through court orders uh, following work by the RTB Investigations and Sanctions Unit, 35 of these sanctions uh, were about failure to comply with rent pressure zone requirements. Significant parts of the country aren't simply, are simply aren't covered uh, by the rent uh, pressure zone legislation, including uh, in the Minister's uh, constituency. This is not because rents are not increasing uh, to completely unaffordable levels in these parts of the country. It is because the rules are written in a way that no matter what happens to rents in these areas, they will never qualify for any protection under the rent pressure zone legislation. 62 out of the 77 local authority areas that don't qualify as rent pressure zones, uh, the reason is because there's insufficient data collected and there's never likely to be sufficient data collected in these areas to allow them to qualify for that minimal level of uh, protection. Renters in these areas have, have faced uh, rent increases of as much of 60%. So this tax credit, where they have no protection at all, is simply going to fuel that more. And in areas where we have rent pressure zones and they're being breached left, right and centre, it's going to fuel rental inflation uh, again. A rent freeze was absolutely necessary to go hand in hand with any rent uh, credits for tax renters. And that's exactly what we said uh, in our in our alternative budget, and it absolutely beggars belief that the government uh, wouldn't understand this and wouldn't understand that a tax credit without a rent freeze, without proper enforcement of rent regulation, would simply be go gobbled up by landlords through rent increases. I couldn't believe, Ken Corla, that the government are setting the rate uh, on vacant, uh, tax on vacant homes at 0.3%. Does the government not know that we have an absolute housing disaster in this country? Do they not know that we have at least 90,000 vacant homes that we need to bring back into use? Are they indifferent to this? This is outstanding indifference. 
the, the rate that house price inflation ha goes up in the last year, it's a rate of 8%. So a speculator sitting on a vacant home simply will have no incentive to do anything about that. Their property price is increasing by 8% as they sit in it, but the government says, well, you have to pay a 0.3% tax uh, on that. It is pathetic to the highest degree. It doesn't recognise the issue that we have with vacancy. It doesn't recognise, this is, the government and the previous government have been talking about a tax on vacant homes since 2017, bringing it in. It displays a completely cavalier attitude to the housing disaster we have and the devastating impact it's having on people. In our uh, fully costed alternative budget proposals, we put forward a punitive 10% uh, tax on vacancy because we want to see every vacant home that isn't in use brought back into use and brought back into use uh, quickly. It is unbelievable that the government is exempting derelict homes from this tax on vacant homes. Why on earth would the government do that? That creates a perverse incentive for any owner of a vacant home sitting on it for speculative reasons to let the home go derelict so it escapes this meagre 0.3% tax. And yes, there is a derelict sites levy, but we all know that the local authorities, in terms of collecting the derelict sites levy, have been completely ineffective year after year. Many local authorities don't collect any derelict sites levy from year uh, to year. Does the government simply not understand what is happening in terms of our housing disaster? Does the government not see that there are students commuting across this country to attend college because they can't uh, get affordable accommodation? Is the government unaware that there are students dropping out of college places because they can't get affordable accommodation? There are students sleeping in tents. There are young people living at home into their late 20s, early 30s who cannot move out and move on with their lives and become independent because of our housing disaster. There's young people who feel their only option is to emigrate from the country. We're losing people with skills that we need in education and healthcare and disability services because of our housing crisis. Does the government not see the women and children fleeing domestic violence who've been returning to abusive partners because they cannot find anywhere to live? Does it not see the 74% of people fleeing domestic violence that have been refused places by refugees such as Searsha domestic violence because they cannot uh, provide them with somewhere to live. Does the government not see the 290,000 hidden homeless people as estimated by the Simon Communities of Ireland who are not in emergency accommodation but who are staying with friends or family in overcrowded accommodation sleeping on floors and couches uh, because of our housing crisis? Does it not see the people who are working, who are studying who in the past would never have been at risk of homelessness, who've become homeless. homeless. Does it not see that we have the majority of local authorities now saying that emergency accommodation is full up or near full up to capacity and that they'll be turning people away from emergency accommodation? Does it not see the families sleeping in tents? Does it not see the heavily pregnant women who've slept in our streets not being able to get into emergency accommodation? Because a 0.3% tax on vacancy is an absolute disgrace. It's utterly ineffective. And to take this amount of time to come up with such a pathetic proposal on vacancy uh, does the entire uh, country a disservice in terms of our housing disaster. The government in this budget has failed uh, to put an effective tax on investment funds. Analysis by Killian Woods in the Business Post has shown that investment funds and speculators and investors have spent almost a billion euro uh, in the last year buying up uh, second-hand homes in Ireland. Institutional investors and real estate firms bought up one in ten second-hand homes, 4,500 homes. That's driving up uh, the cost of housing for everyone else. One single fund, according to the Ditch, bought up more than 850 second-hand homes in the last uh, three years and has now become one of the biggest landlords in the country. Despite this, the tax uh, by in, by being paid by investment funds is actually in free fall. Following the change uh, to uh, clamp down an aggressive tax avoidance, an effective tax rate of 17.9% was paid by Irish real estate funds. However, last year this has collapsed to just 5.9%. It's gravely disappointing that in this budget no measures have been announced to tackle this 
and instead the minister simply said that he intends to carry out a review. The Social Democrats in our proposals proposed an effective tax rate of 25% on investment funds through a levy on their profits. That could have been done and should have been done by the government today. The government is simply failing to act and to deliver on the promises that it makes on budget day in terms of housing delivery. Year after year promises are made and year after year the promises are broken and the targets are missed. In his speech of Budget 2021, the Minister for Housing promised that there would be 9,500 new build social homes delivered. Instead, in 2021, in terms of new build homes, little over half of those were actually delivered. We were promised a paltry 350 cost rental homes last year. Only 65 were delivered and tenanted. And out of 10,000 affordable homes a year that we were promised during the general election by Dara O'Brien, zero affordable purchase homes were actually delivered last year. We only have partial figures for delivery so far in 2022, but unfortunately the news is not much better. In last year's budget, more than 4,000 affordable purchase and cost rental homes were promised. So far, just 300 cost rental homes have been delivered and only 325 affordable purchase homes. This is far short not only of the government's targets, the promises made last year in the budget, but far short of the thousands and thousands of affordable and cost rental homes that we desperately need uh, in this country. And that renders the promises made on budget day by the government um, in terms of housing delivery, renders them meaningless. In terms of construction defects, the announcements today are particularly disappointing. It's not clear that there will be any immediate measures uh, to assist apartment own owners who are grappling with the costs of fire safety and other defects. People with fire safety defects in apartments have been charged sums of money they simply cannot afford to pay for defective work that they are in no way responsible for. The failure to introduce some sort of retrospective tax credits for owner occupiers could lead to fire safety work being stalled or deferred. And it's deeply unfair that landlords, of course, can avail of uh, tax relief in that regard, but owner-occupiers cannot. In terms of long-term leasing, which is a gift to developers and investment funds, where their full financing costs or their mortgages paid off over by the state, typically over a period of 25 years, and where they keep full ownership of the home at the end of the lease, uh, the announcements uh, today on continuing long-term leasing uh, by the government are very uh, disappointing. And I have to say, it's an abuse of the English language for anyone to come in here and say they're winding down long-term leasing when in fact what they're doing is they're ramping it up. It's an abuse of the language. The people of Ireland are not stupid. They can see this for what it is. The government is in fact ramping up long-term leasing by committing to another 2,530 new long-term leases in addition to what they've already committed to next year. There are solutions, Count Corla, to the housing crisis. Instead of giving money to developers and funds, we could instead be using this money to build additional affordable housing. We need more supply, however, it's critical that we get more supply of homes that are affordable for people to buy and rent. There's an excellent model being provided by O'Coulon in terms of building affordable homes in Dublin, Cork and Waterford and they've shown how they can deliver affordable homes which are being sold well designed, energy efficient, uh, three bedroom homes that are being sold uh, in between rates of about 230,000 to 260,000 euro a year. That model urgently needs to be scaled up and rolled out nationwide. In the Social Democrats' fully cost of budget, pr budget proposals, we showed how we could build 10,000 social homes and 10,000 affordable homes, including 5,000 cost rental homes and 5,000 affordable purchase homes next year. In our proposals, we would have ended the multi-million euro bud uh, subsidies to developers, we would have introduced a new effective tax rate on investment funds, and we would have introduced a punitive tax of 10% on vacant and derelict homes to bring those homes that we desperately need back into use quickly. New rents over the last year have increased by 9%. House prices have increased by 8%. Homelessness has increased by 30%. Child homelessness has increased by 47%. And the profits of the largest developer in Ireland have increased by 84% in the first six months of this year. 
Never in the history of Ireland have rents been so high, have house prices been so high, has homelessness been so high, and never in the history of Ireland have the profits of our largest house builder been so high. The promises on housing, and there have been many from the government uh, over the last few years, are simply not being uh, delivered. The government's plan is not working. Housing is key to human dignity. Bunlocht mother legitimate on dinner is I on Tihiacht. The government has to move out of its denial on housing and has to take effective action to deal with our crisis. Thank you.